In this video, let's look at MapReduce, which is a parallel processing architecture on HDFS. MapReduce is a software framework for processing large data sets in a distributed fashion over the several machines. It comes from the ideas published by Google in 2004. These ideas were inspired by the aspects of the Lisp programming language. In essence, map and reduce classes are primarily written in Java in such a way that they can work on a part of a data or a data block. MapReduce hides the complexity of the cluster management, such as managing node failures, managing parallelization, data distribution, load balancing, fault tolerance, and other areas of cluster resource management, allowing the programmer to focus on the data and not worry about synchronization logic, parallelization, etc. Understanding MapReduce is relatively easy and this understanding provides the basis for more complex parallel processing architectures such as Apache Storm, Spark, Tage, etc. Hadoop supports a MapReduce model which was introduced by Google as a method of solving a class of petascale problems with large clusters of inexpensive machines. The model is based on two distinct steps for an application. MapReduce works on breaking the processing into two phases, map phase and a reduce phase. Each phase has key value pairs as input and output, the types of which may be chosen by the programmer. The term MapReduce comes from the two fundamental data transformation operations used, map and reduce. A map operation converts the elements of a collection from one to another. In this case, input key value pairs are converted to zero to many output key value pairs, where the input and output keys might be completely different and the input and output values might be completely different. Let me explain the concept of MapReduce by means of a, an example. First, let's understand the logical components. Map processes and reducer processes are separate units of processing that can be sent on any worker node in the cluster to work on a part of the data. A map process is an action or a transformation of a block of data, whereas reduced processes are typically an aggregation of the results of mappers. Let's look at the example of the word count in detail. Each physical block of the input data is first converted into something called as input splits by the MapReduce framework. So input split is nothing more than logical split of data. This is to make sure that the data block passed to one mapper instance is clean without any breakage in the data itself. Each of the input splits of the data will be processed by a separate map task process. If there are four input splits created by the framework, there will be four mappers and each input split is passed as an input to each of the mapper instances. So the number of mappers required will be automatically determined by the MapReduce framework depending on the input splits. The input data will be passed on to the mapper instances by means of key value pairs. The input type of the file would determine what would be the key and what would be the value. For example, if the input file from HDFS is in text format, then the input format, in this case, text input format will determine the key and value, which is byte offset as the key and the entire line as a value itself. The byte offset is a number and unique to every line. Once a mapper processes the data, the intermediate data is sent to another node for performing shuffle and sort operation, where similar keys and values are grouped together and sorted based on the keys. The sorted key values are sent to the reducers for the final aggregation. All the intermediate data with the same keys goes to the same reducer. The reducer then aggregates and writes the final output 
back to HDFS. Let's look at another example of inverted index. This process is used in many search engines to develop the index which is used when we do searches on the internet. The input data typically consists of the address of the web page followed by the list of words. All the words will appear on that web page as shown on the left of this image. The input data is then processed by each mapper processes and is converted into a set of key value pairs. In this example, those key value pairs would be a word that appears on the web page followed by the address of the web page. This map process can easily be divided on multiple machines in the cluster. So if the input data consists of a million lines of data, each map process may work on a hundred thousand lines of data at a time and they can do that independently. Next step in MapReduce is to take the intermediate results as you can see on the left side and to transfer to reducers based on the same key. For example, the intermediate result consists of a keyword followed by a website address. All key value pairs will have the same key. For example, books will be sent to the same reducer. Maybe it's reducer 1. All the key value pairs which have the same key, for example, music, will be sent to another reducer. In this example, this data is sent to say two separate reducer processes. In reality, a single reducer may process multiple keys. The reducer then combines the data as shown on the right side of the image. So all of the data with the same keyword books turn into key value pair books followed by a list of web addresses where that word appeared. For example, here you can see the keyword books appeared on amazon.com, coast.com. Similarly, with the word music, the resultant data is the word music followed by a list of websites where the word music appears. And this will be done on a million lines of data in parallel across the cluster. And finally, let's look at a third example of temperature data for some of the major cities across the world. The temperature data is shown on the left of the image, which consists of a city, date, some text, and a minimum and maximum temperature. We'd like to find out the maximum temperature over a given date range for a particular city. In this example, the map processes is doing some kind of filtering on the data and maybe some lightweight processing. So the intermediate results would consist of key value pairs of a city followed by high temperature for the day. The map processes may filter out data based on a date range. The intermediate results consist of multiple results from multiple cities for different date ranges. The second step in the map process is shuffle and sort where key value pairs with the same key get aggregated to the same reducer. For example, the intermediate results for New York will all get sent to the same reducer. The intermediate results are shown on the right. Data for New York contains a list of temperatures for the city over a given time period, which was filtered out earlier. The shuffle and sort mechanism will sort this data by key, which is the city name in our case. And you will notice that the values are not sorted horizontally. Only the keys are sorted. The third and final step is to take the intermediate data from the shuffle and sort operation, which is on the left side of the image, and to find the maximum temperature for a given city. The reducer process takes the key value pair shown here, which is the city followed by the list of temperatures and picks out the maximum temperature for that city. And the output is then stored in HDFS. I hope these three examples have given you sufficient insight into MapReduce and the main components of MapReduce framework. In the next video, we will have a quick overview of YARN or yet another resource negotiator. 
which is a Hadoop scalable compute platform. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos.